Professor of College Park here in the new town of Bedford. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. This application is for the erection of 32 apartments in one two-storey block with residential space in the roof. Associated car parking, landscaping and the existing buildings are to be demolished. The application is being brought before committee as it is proposed not to pay contributions in line with the standard tariff. A site visit has been conducted today to look at residential amenity and highway safety. Key issues are highlighted on the agenda, but the presentation will focus on highway safety, residential amenity and the planning obligations. Access to the site is via a narrow access from Newtown Road, which serves the site and the former office building known as Beda House. Warwickshire County Council Highways do not object, object to the scheme, subject to a condition as set out on the agenda. 32 parking spaces are proposed, including one for people with disabilities. The site is in close proximity to Bedwood Town Centre, which is in a sustainable location, and as such, this level of parking is acceptable. Following the deferral of the application from the previous committee, confirmation has been received from Warwickshire County Council Highways that due to the authorised use of the site, the proposal is a betterment in highway terms. In relation to residential amenity, uh, it's covered in detail on the agenda, but the main points are that numbers 50, 5 to 23 Newtown Road are overlooked by secondary windows at the first floor level in the proposed building. These are to be obscure glazed and a condition is suggested to ensure that they remain obscure glass. Some of the ground floor windows in the proposed building will be located 5 to 6 metres away from the blank rear elevation of home, the Home Comforts building, which is situated on George Street Ringway. The lounge window affected has an additional window on another elevation, therefore making this acceptable. However, there are two bedroom windows affected, and these will have a reduced level of amenity. However, officers consider that in this case there is a degree of buyer beware in order to achieve an acceptable scheme overall. Beda House has been granted permission to change uh, into a residential building. The distance standards between the proposed building and Beda House are complied with. In terms of planning obligations and viability, Warwickshire County Council have requested £58,000 towards education <coughs> facilities. Play and open space contributions of £79,000 have also been requested. A viability assessment was submitted with the application. It attempted to justify that no contributions could be paid for by the scheme. This was scrutinised by the Council's Land and Property Manager and it was found that some capacity did exist and contributions could be made. Following negotiations with the applicant, £26,000 has been offered in relation to play and open space to be spent at Bedworth Slough, but no education contributions have been offered. In relation to the provision of affordable housing, the usual policy of the Council on schemes of 15 units or more is to request 25% of the number of properties provided are, are affordable housing. However, recent changes in the planning policy guidance mean that something called a vacant building credit must be applied to the site in relation to the provision of affordable housing. <coughs> this slide provides a direct quote from the guidance and in essence means that where any vacant building is to be demolished and replaced by another or brought back into a lawful use, the developer must be given a financial credit equivalent to the floor space of the existing building when affordable housing is calculated. Following deferral, clarification on this was sought and other councils understand it and apply it in the same way as being applied here. Further to this, the legislation is clear that it is any building and no specific use class which it is applied to. In this instance, when the existing floor space, indicated in blue here, is removed from the proposed floor space, which there are several <coughs> floors of, there is a 50% increase. Therefore, only 56% of the Therefore, only 56% of the normal affordable housing requirement should be requested. On this site, therefore, five units of affordable housing could be requested. 
The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to the com completion of a legal agreement and conditions as printed on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
same time close the door as well, that would not me. But if the, if the old way to fill my chair, it is just, well, you see, it, we, but the two roads we've got monsters in my ward and party ward, I think, is the Leicester, non even Road, Collie Cross, <coughs> we keep building on the this crazy and new town road. How do we stop the vehicle? How do we change the road, town road? We can't because of how it is. The only thing we can uh, help the situation, the residents in that area, is not allow developments. Or they'll do to bring more traffic on to, to, to blight their lives. And you are going to blight their lives who live close to it. It's unbelievable. Councillor London. Thank you. I've got a number of points to like to make on this. One of the reasons I asked uh, about the definition of severe was half with this in mind. Because as far as I'm concerned, that to me is severe. Um, you're going into an access, public access road with this number of vehicles, not counting me the house. Uh, and I think like Tony said, I've been over there as well. And you wouldn't be able to turn right out there if you wanted to. Uh, and that's that's one of the things that I think is, is bad with this. Also, somebody's going to tell me if I'm wrong, and I probably am, but I don't know if it's a material consideration about the, the, what happens at Beda House. I was fortunate, fortunate enough to go over there when it was uh, being got uh, substituted for Brian, uh, the mayor, and uh, Beda House is like a halfway house for people with mental uh, illness uh, to try to integrate them back into, a, into, into the community. Now, whether or not it's right to, to say that this shouldn't go ahead because of that, I'm not quite sure. However, um, there will be some people with spatial difficulties with that, uh, and that road, that access, uh, could be highly dangerous with cars coming in and out uh, from this development. So I think it should be a material consideration, uh, even if it's not. Uh, the barber shop on the corner, when I was there, uh, because there was quite a few cars in there, being at the, uh, as it was the, the ground breaking and opening, uh, he seemed to think that he has permission, him and his customers have permission to park on that access road. Uh, he was quite adamant about it, that's why he's objecting to other people parking there because it's stopping his business. Now, whether that's been considered or not, I don't know. Probably not because it's private, it's a private access. Um, so, with all those considerations, I think this is a badly thought out uh, piece of, uh, piece of uh, work for this number. I think it's grossly overdeveloped. It's far, far too intensive for that small piece of ground, uh, plus all the vehicles in there. And I don't like it one little bit. Uh, and also, I'm amazed at Warwickshire County Council selling the land and then asking for £55,500 for education. Uh, it seems a bit of a cheat to me uh, when it comes down to it that, that's, uh, that they can actually do that. But of course, they can do that. So, with those things in mind, you know, perhaps the officers are going to tell me off. Residential. Yes, for, for people with mental health problems. Mm -hmm. I've got a spade with it on. 
then the spade. Whether it's residential for people with those sorts of uses or That's with those sorts of issues, or just for resident general no, it's, residential it's use, it's health. still residential in terms of the planning legislation. I guess the, que the question was, would that be a material consideration if, the, if somebody's got a special need? The, the, when we assess residential amenity, um, it's obviously a, it is a material consideration, um, but the, the special needs of the people that live there may not make a difference to this application because the residential amenity has been assessed and has been found not to have been impacted upon by the proposal. I don't disagree entirely with that. I don't think enough research has been done into that. But there may be a chance to expand on that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm not all in favour of this one. I think it's going to try from one principles of development. Totally agree. It's a, it's a site at the moment which gives little or no value to the borough. Uh, and I think the Bina House side of it is looking really good. Uh, it needs some sort of development on it, and I think as a brownfield site, housing is ideal. Uh, as to my colleague's problems with uh, the highways, well, uh, it's described as a, a narrow access. Well, looking at the access today, I'd say the access is wider than most of the residential streets in the borough where we've got parking either side. I don't think we'd have any trouble getting a refuse van down there, let alone one of my older uh, colleague's fire trucks. That, that's a wide access to me compared to most of the roads in the borough. Uh, the proof was in the visit today. We took 12, 13 people, 10 cars, 10 cars into that site in a matter of 10 minutes. There's a couple of other people turned up and got out of the cars and walked away. There was builders leaving in their vans uh, two or three hours while we were there. There didn't seem to be a problem with access. When we came to leave, uh, the traffic stopped for us and we pulled out without any problem at all. Uh, we weren't late at the next site visit. We got out of there, no trouble whatsoever. Although I do agree as much as it's typical, it's not good, it's typical of the borough to have that sort of congestion, but today I didn't see a problem, and I'm all in favour of this development. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> well, there's one or two good things about this application. It will provide homes for 32 families even though they're fairly small homes, they can be surrounded by cars in the car park. And it is a potentially sustainable site with its proximity to the town centre. However, leaving aside the issue of access, but still sticking with the topic of cars, I just find it quite amazing that we've only got 32 spaces for this development. There's going to be way more than 32 cars uh, generated. The access road, so-called, uh, the two pavements, or whatever they are on either side, because there are curves, are covered in cars. I understand there's still the yellow lines there, but they're obviously not being enforced. There's no way for pedestrians to get in there without walking on the carriageway, certainly in a minute. We don't know how many cars are going to be generated by the house, and um, whether they can um, be accommodated on the site or not. Uh, hmm. It seems very disastrous to me. Um, as uh, others have uh, said, we don't seem to have enough information. There hasn't been enough research into exactly the uh, number of vehicles that are going to be generated. I'm very doubtful about this one altogether. So I'm inclined to uh, not go for approval. Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, okay, it's been mentioned about it being overdeveloped. I think that's, uh, in my, I think that's a bit debatable. Um, the problem is, is obviously we need all different types of properties to be built in the borough. I mean, we do have a lot happening in other areas where there's larger houses, with a lot of uh, comments made about the larger houses and you know, who's buying them or, or not buying them. Uh, so this type of development is uh, very much needed because I take it they're going to be for sale. I have nothing, the only thing it tells me, which is quite interesting actually, 
that there's five units of affordable housing to be provided. And it said this is likely to be 75% social rented and 25% shared ownership. How does that work? Because that would work if there's four, but it's not going to work if there's five. Can it not be 80% or whatever? That, the figures just don't work on the five. That, that might just be a, a planning level thing. On the, the, the access, yeah, I mean, I drive by there quite a lot. I walk by there indeed a reasonable amount of times. And actually, it's wider there, the whole area, I'm talking about the whole area, is wider there than I had actually seen it in my head, if you like. There was cars parked down both sides, yeah, and whether they should be there or whether they shouldn't is not a matter, certainly not a matter for me and my consideration because I'm told it's nothing to do with this application. And there was still room, there's still wide enough there for cars to to and fro, in and out. So I don't see that access in itself is a problem. The, access, the problem where it may be is, as it's been said, coming out and turning right. Well, I struggle sometimes to find anywhere that's not a problem turning right, if it's reasonably busy. A colleague has mentioned that earlier on today. That is an issue. But, and we all, we all face that somewhere. Now, you could argue, and I, I have actually had an application recently on the other side of the road, I didn't make a point about people turning right and whatever, but the more I think about it, coming out of there, if you want to go right, your best bet, people in Market Avenue, Market Avenue ain't going to like this, but your best bet is probably to go left, go through Market Avenue and come out the other end. Now, that's going to create whatever. But, turning right is a problem a lot of the time. Uh, a colleague on my immediate right has mentioned about today. I'll be honest, I haven't actually thought about that. But hey ho, this is what debate's all about, isn't it? Somebody saying something. In the sense that today, there was all the, the movements of vehicles there, and yeah, it didn't strike me as making it yeah, greatly. Uh, busier than it actually is. Newtown Road is a busy road. I've often held up there, but that's the nature of uh, the borough in many places. So I think we'd struggle to turn this one down, actually. I think another thing that's been mentioned, and Truman, you know me, over the years I've hated when people have used the phrase, ah, we'll lose this one in appeal. I've always said, hey, hang on, we're not talking about appeal. We're dealing with it. But, recently, what we had, and it's been mentioned by a member behind me today, about the costs of appeal, so we've got to be mindful of that. We have, I don't like it, but we have to be, I like to think, no, I'm going to make the decision, along with my colleagues, but at the end of the day, we do have to be mindful of that. So, I'm, I'm struggling at the moment to think, I'm going to vote anything other than in favour. Nothing's been thrown up to me yet that's actually been heavy enough evidence to make me vote against. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, I've heard all the comments about transport, road structures, etc, etc, so I'm taking them on board. However, I don't also think this is a very good development in the fact that we are allowing development that says, buyer beware. I don't know when we have become a council or a planning application committee whereby we allow property to be built where we have to let the, met the occupants know in the future, well the developer will, oh please beware. You know, I don't think this is a good design at all. It also says that there are, on the eastern elevation of ground floor in the proposal, are some habitable rooms, windows, which serve bedrooms and a lounge. They will be between five and six metres away from a blank, from this blank elevation of the home comfort showroom. This is below the minimum, minimum separation of 12 metres set out in the regional guidance design thingy. You know, I mean, it's below the minimum. It might be a personal planning officer's 
well, we'll be a bit flexible on this, you know, but we're going to have to accept a planning application where there's buyer beware for, de for de future owners, maybe 10 years, 5 years down the line, you know, will it be in the contract there in the future? You know, who's going to let these people know? I mean, we can pass our hands of this and just say, well, yeah, that's all right, the developer, the seller will have to put in the buyer beware thing. But it's poor design. It's poor de not design with the roads. It's poor design with the, the amount of car parking. So the intensification. But officers have given us a recommendation, a thing for approval, and we have to be minded in this day of financial restraint of, finance, of officer recommendations and appeal. But it's a poor piece of work. Statistics to say about what the traffic route somebody meant. Was it Coast? Was it Valley or Coast? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it's a, it, about the, the amount of traffic movement. I, for one, knowing that side, don't believe there was uh, more movement with the previous use. And, you know, in, in fairness, that side's not been used for some years now because they decided to take something else away from, from the town. Um, could you also tell me, on the, on the plan where we looked at the, the car parking spaces, mm -hmm. I just found it odd, it's maybe, it doesn't matter, but I found it odd that there's a gap in the centre between the garages, and yet then we've got one cockeyed one. Now, to me, it would have made sense to have them all pushed up together, if you have it did, and then that one, the cockeyed one, could have been on the end, in the proper position. Is there a reason for that? I don't know. As I understand it, it's, it's probably the gap in the middle is just to break up the mass of car parking, to reduce the amount of um, hard surface in one long row. It's just a visual. You know, that They will plant something in that area to break up the mass of car uh, parking. Uh, and do we still consult with the police on 
designing out crime because yeah. to me I could see people could get access along that back where there's vehicle access to the back of Margaret Avenue and then use uh, that to, to cut through the site. But, but, but that's it, we don't, if we don't know, we don't know. And, and my final question before I make some comments is I'm interested in the, the, um, the design of the balconies. I don't know whether you've got anything there that gives us a better detail. Because it looks to me like they're not Juliet balconies, that they're actually a projected balcony. But it does describe them as being small. What does small mean? Does it mean you can sit on them or lean out the um, window? Or? They, elevation wise, they look like that. Yeah, well, so I can't tell when And then so. I'll show on the floor plan. I mean, I know they do project. They project, but, but you can't, you can't step out of it. So the balcony, you, the balcony projects, but the projection is internal. If that makes sense, so the doors open inwards, so you couldn't step out any further. They're more like a guardrail. The the, 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 the the side walls are. I must be the opposite. <coughs> the side walls are brick, and then it would be double doors. But they, the balcony itself projects from the building, but you can't step out of the balcony. So it's not a balcony, it's a bay window. Ultimately, yeah. A balcony to me is something that you can stand on or sit on and enjoy some outside okay. space. It does, uh, uh, let me see if it's got... But that shows windows. the doors opening. It looks, like it looks like there are windows. <coughs> so it would be like a, bay, a square bay. Well, it's not a balcony then. Are you talking about a balcony, is it? Well, it's might. described as a balcony, it's not a balcony, it's a bay window with doors on. Juliet yeah. balcony. It's a right, let me try and be clarify it. It is a solid structure. Yes. Contained as part of the building. Yes. So it's not a balcony then, so I'll put in that down on my little list of things here. Um, <laughs> I, some some of the points that I was gonna make, a couple have been covered, but uh, um, one of them, and I, and I think it's important because it's cropping up more and more these days, well, of late. And I don't believe it's always acceptable to put in obscure windows in somebody's living area. I think that takes away the quality of their life in that living space. Obviously, bathrooms, toilet windows, yes. In some circumstances, possibly living space but not many and I actually think on this occasion the design of it to do that just actually proves that it's not meeting the guidelines and it's also re restricting that thing so I think the design of that is, is, is poor and uh, it, it perhaps needs going back to the drawing board. When you talk, and that's part of the residential amenity um, thing of it, the other thing and I've mentioned it before these committees, and it's something that we're not doing enough about as an authority, is about creating proper open space for people to enjoy. Mm. We've put up more and more blocks of flats, and unlike most places in Europe that actually put squares and greens and whatever that people can enjoy, we don't do it. We don't do it. We haven't got it here, and that's why I was asking on site about the little bit of green area at the back. It's not really wide enough for people to be able to use for any, any purpose because there's a path running through the centre of it. And our only amelioration on it is to give some money towards the slab. And I doubt very much whether these people would go all the way down to the slab to enjoy the, the things there. The money would probably, yeah, enhance it and give it uh, uh, a benefit for other people. but. I don't know about these. Um, the road situation bothers me. I do know the road and I'll declare an interest, although people probably won't believe it. I do go to Jace's to get my hair cut. I don't get it pruned or anything, but um, I'll go down there to get my hair cut. And I was absolutely astonished when I was down there because I did ask about the double yellow lines that our officers have referred to in the paperwork. You can see them in. in little places now because they've all worn away. 
But they don't mean anything anyway because the road's not adopted. I'm absolutely astonished that the county council had land both sides of that because I think that belonged to the county <coughs> where we went today as well as the other side that have got an access road that's not adopted. And it's a bit like the one across, across the road when we refused that. It's the parking down the sides. I agree with people that said, yes, you can drive quite safely up and down that road. If you're a pedestrian coming out of either of them developments, you can't walk safely because there's cars parked on both sides of that road, on the pavements, and you, you, you will have to walk in the road. There's no alternative. The road's not adopted, you won't be able to stop it. We can't send the civil enforcement officers down there because it's not adopted. So I see that as a, as a real um, issue. Uh, what else did I have? Uh, Councillor Phillips spoke on the bio beware thing. And again, to see that within the documentation actually points out to me that there's something wrong with the application. If we're saying that we've got to make buyers beware of problems, then why does it make it acceptable? <coughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll just finish before I bring in anybody else, if anybody else left. Uh, and it's a bit of the press ain't here because they might have picked up on it. We are being robbed on this site. Not just this site, but it's going to be lots of other sites now. It's bad enough about the 106s and the sills. But now we've got this new legislation by the government, which as far as I know we weren't consulted on, where we're going to lose vast amounts of money that would have benefited the areas to take account of development in those areas. And the, uh, the government keeps saying, you know, you should be having these things and then you get these monies that will help in other ways. But now they're taking all that off us again. And this is a prime example of it. There's nothing we can probably do about that, although I think officers are aware, I think the interpretation of it, particularly to this site, isn't right, but uh, that's my own personal view. Uh, I'm going to move on and then we'll see where we're going with it. Has anybody not already spoken that has the bone on? Thank you, Chair. Um, I was actually quite happy to propose this, uh, propose the officers' recommendations, and having listened to all the, the points that have been made, I'm still quite happy uh, to, for it to retain my support. Um, the history of this site, I've, I've been in and out of this site quite a few times yet over many previous years, and it's always been a fairly busy site. I'm not aware of recent history here with the closure of the college facilities, the change of use of Peter House. But as Chair of Social Services, I used to visit there fairly often. A fairly tight site to park in, not much space for a councillor to put his car because the staff took up all the car parking space there. But it does indicate to me that history of it as a college and that history of it as a busy social services uh, uh, set of buildings, that it was always a busy site. And I think the officers point that colleges are allowed a certain volume of traffic and that's acceptable, that business premises have a certain volume of, of uh, traffic and that's acceptable. I think also it's, it's certainly sprung to my mind the home base site just further down the road with a very similar access and a huge car park at the back and big traffic flows there that's quite acceptable so i think you come back to considering whether this is a sustainable development on a site which would be difficult to find you could never make it recreational you could never give off a green space in, in that site. Um, and I think it's a perfectly acceptable alternative to what is there now. Deadly buildings, rotting away. And if we turn down developments like this, I can't see anything sustainable or usable uh, in its place. So I think it's a, quite a reasonable development. 
and we should welcome it as an addition to a small uh, residential setting uh, in the middle of a town, which uh, I think is quite a reasonable thing to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Foster. Thanks, Chair. I'll just add a few words. I, I have to say I've used Newtown Road a lot, especially for the own base, uh, and, and I can agree with the comments just made. I, I don't think there's an issue here, apart from the fact that it is busy and it's difficult to turn right, as it's been said, in terms of more places. Um, I think it's rather crowded development, but what's going to result there is a lot better than exists at the moment, so I will support. Any other members? If not, the other members in here want to come back up? No? Mm. Right, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Approval as is printed on the, rec uh, on the recommendation. All those in favour of that? From the chair then, that's not approved. So from the chair, can I move refusal and the, the issues that I heard from the committee and people would tell me if I'm wrong. Um, forgive me if they're not in the right, pro properly joined up here. Uh, would be Highway safety implications, both in accessing the site and the actual unadopted part of it, that the pavement parking uh, would mean people would have to walk in the road. Uh, the, sorry, yeah, alongside that, it was the insufficient parking on site, which could create more on street parking. Um, the design aspects of the windows being obscure glazed, which would uh, lead to a loss of quality for the residents of the, of the new stuff. As well as the question mark over the design of the what is termed balcony, and that there's insufficient insufficient detail provided on the vehicle movements uh, that are currently that are currently used the site, and the vehicle movements that would come from the development of the site. That's what I've heard. Have I missed anything? Or are members unhappy with any of those? Or the
residential, whether it involves an element of care or not, um, is still classed as a residential use. So we've assessed residential amenity as residential amenity. And I, I don't think that we could say that a material consideration for the people potentially with learning difficulties would be significant enough to add as a reason for refusal. We, we can consider that, but I don't think that it would be, would be strong enough to refuse, to refuse the application on that basis. Look, what's my lips? There are a lot of people with learning difficulties. There are people with mental health problems, which is entirely different. And they're trying to be reintegrated back into the community. It's entirely different to what we were telling you. Now, you can just take this residential place. That's easy. Because you can call a residential home a residential place. But not, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is suitable for a mixed use site. I'm sorry, but I feel very strongly on that. And we've both got we enough information on that to actually make a decision. Well, I have anyway. What's your advice? Is that, that well, would be a material consider it as a material consideration, but it wouldn't be strong enough to include that as a reason for refusal. It shouldn't, that shouldn't override the development. Right, I want to go, I'm going to go through these again, and I want the officers to tell us what you feel is or not acceptable as reasons for refusal, because we, we will do it. Um, feed the house and its residents. I don't think that there's a thought that. The over-intensive nature of the development. Yes, we could justify that. Uh, the highway implications. If you mean highway implications in relation to pedestrian safety, then yes, we could substantiate that, but we couldn't in relation to vehicle movements. Chair, can I question that? About, about vehicle movement and that coming out. We've turned tons around over the Nishbury, uh, uh, coming out of junctions, and somebody today, I heard an officer tell me we can't just report traffic movement. Sorry, we have turned down here, we even got me here now coming over telling us about development power well, because of the development, because we said it wasn't there. If we decide that's what we feel it should be done, then that is the choice that we've put on as one of our applications to do. Whether with the, the inspector accepts it or not, it's one of us, it's my way, movement in and out in that thing. T Tony, all I'm doing is seeking the advice of the officers, that's all they give us. It's down to us to decide on what reasons we can do. And as I've always said to managers, if an appeal comes up, please put your name down and go along and, sp and, and, and speak to it. And, you know, I'm not going to be really open to about the, the highway things, but I would support you on, the, on that being a reason, but it's going to be down to the members. Um, then there were, so that covered both, both parts. That was the parking in, on the footpath and the, and the general highway implications, yeah? Um, then there was the design in regard to the obscure windows and the balconies. We can um, certainly probably amalgamate those two reasons together and say that it doesn't result in a sufficient standard of residential unity for the proposed residents. Did you all also want to include the impact in relation to the back of the home complex building? Because I don't think that was specifically mentioned. justify 
that on appeal, especially as we now no longer have a supplementary planning guidance document that tells us how many parking spaces things should have in any event their maximum standards that we used to operate as well. So I don't believe we could justify that. Could we justify it on the environmental impact on fumes, car fumes and noise from our Yeah. It would be very difficult to do that, especially as environmental health have commented that there's no issues in relation to air quality in this area. Um, they, they've got no concerns with it. Environmental impact on the fumes, the diesel and stuff. How do we prove that? Get our, get our inspectors from the health, we've got an health department here. And they, well, environmental health well, have commented that the air quality is not an issue. Well, no, I did ask uh, for further information from environmental health on the, the junction and the traffic there. And that's what we've had back from them. We specifically been, asked that been, information. There's been nothing back no, reported to the It's on the addendum. No one's there, sorry. Yes. What they came back with was air quality is not an issue for this area. Okay, and um, vehicle movements. We don't have any detail on vehicle movements, both previously or to support this application. Not specifically, but that is something that the county council <coughs> have looked at in relation to their comments that they've made to us and result that if Beda House was used as an office, this side was used as a college, irrespective of how they're used now, the number of vehicular movements between the two of them is less than what it could be as its current or most use. Right, well, members have heard <coughs> the reasons that I've heard from members, and have also heard what the officers believe they can or cannot support if it went to an appeal. Hopefully it would do that with the uh, different application coming. But um, so I'm gonna look at the the, the Beaver House part of it is removed, that's what the officers are saying. The um, the insufficient parking on site they've said they couldn't wouldn't be able to support. And the statistics around vehicle movements, I actually think the vehicle movements ties in with that with the highway bits. You can take out the vehicle movements? Yeah. Okay, that leaves me with that. The reasons, if you vote for refusal, would be the over-intensive nature of the site, the highway implications, both you know, on the main drag and getting in and out, plus the access road not being adopted uh, and pavement parking and pedestrians would have to walk in the road and the design of the, the, uh, the development in regard to the windows. People all understand what we're going to vote on. Yeah. Council, Bob, yeah, I'll... Yeah, just one thing, it's that we pointed out. It says about the highway network that the uh, illustrative master plan must also indicate highway connections to the adjoining sites. Uh, oh, that's, main a plan showing that, the that's, a, that's a different item. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. We're dealing with item number one. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Off on a tangent. So, are yeah. members clear on what they're voting on? Yeah. yeah. It's been moved, refusal, and seconded. I can't remember who seconded it, actually. Did you write that down? Thank you, but seconded by Council London anyway now. For those reasons that I've just read out. All those in favour of the Thank you. And against. And abstentions. 